with your realtor because folks didn't know. I, I hear that. You know, folks. Opportunity. That's yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm inclusion and equity for yeah. the opportunity for someone else to be able yes. to apply. Yeah, that, that, that's right. And I just want to say <clears throat> to yes. the community, we, I, we don't mean to oversell any boundaries or cut any lines. We want to be able to be part of the process like this. We're all learning. There is a reason why we chose the building where it was. Um, and there's a huge backstory of why we chose to bring hex design code here. I have not bad pre because I was a victim of gun violence when I was 10 years old. So I left. I was like, I don't want to be there. My family should not experience this. Now I'm 26. I'm back. I left my IT engineering job to go full force into creating this business to create opportunity for kids that look like me that suffered through that same gun violence. I have, I went to Battle Creek Central. Uh, some of my good friends have been victims of gun violence as well. And that's the reason why we're here, is to be able to bring different technology to show kids that you can make it out of where we're at. And yeah, just wanted to say, I don't want to overstep. Thank you. And I would like to, can I add? Uh, one more, uh, we had another hand up. Uh, I just have a quick question for Sarah instance if the freeze was off and everybody know and like five or six people wanted this exact same property I know you mentioned first come first serve is there any other criteria that would make um, how would you determine who would be able to purchase or pursue purchasing that property if there was multiple people that want the same parcel so if we were going to list it for a realtor and we were getting multiple offers we would do it as a um, development plan and highest offer um, but our board has already made a decision that we don't have to take the highest offer. We have to take the best plan for the community. So we would evaluate it based on that criteria. Um, so, you know, occasionally we get a really high offer, but there's no substance. So if we got a really high offer, we got two offers. We got a really high offer that had no substance, and we got an offer from Hex, who's an adjacent owner that was valid, that fit within that, um, fair market value that our that our realtor had provided, we would likely take that. And so occasionally, um, like when we sell our home, we will occasionally not take the highest offer if it's gonna be a rental. We'll take a lower offer if it's gonna be an owner-occupied home because that will be more stabilizing for the neighborhood. So we make decisions based on that, based on what's best for that that house or that, that property, based on what the guidance that our board has provided for us. I think next up was uh, Dr. Johnson, then Heather, and I think I see David's going to do Right, and I, so some of it is just the agenda today, because I don't want to discount the presentation so that we could like consider this as one of them as we revise the process at the same time, and then when we get it cleaned up, we can maybe hear from some others who also have interest, but if we could consider, it, so they don't necessarily have to represent again, right? So what, that's, yeah, and I also agree with your point about how do we determine this? So if we're having a fresh start, right? Uh, like officially, this is up for an entry uh, to report interest. Um, what we want to avoid is a head start, right? Like so, if you submitted it earlier, that we would just count it as if this is the official date. Anything prior to that? Do you give an up for a with that? So no. okay, you Thank you. Yeah, um, and I don't want to discount what anyone's saying because I agree with several parts of everything, so I don't want that to come off with what I'm about to say. <laughs> um, I do feel that even though there was a freeze, as a small business owner, if you want something, you hustle and you ask even if there is something. And I think the community, like that's just what you do when you're a small business owner. I come up from a family, and if it's froze, well, I'm still going to call and be like, hey, when is this open? I, can I put an application in it? You still try and try and try. So I feel like, and has there been any other inquiries about this property? And I don't know who else would want that because you're, it's not that big. Like it, you can expand what you want to do, but it's so tight in there. And I'd rather that you guys get it rather than the new liquor store that's coming to town. Um, so I don't know, I, I think you guys are doing a wonderful job and you're also an ethnic mi minority and you want to add space for more businesses to come that are like you. So I don't see a problem with moving forward with this property because you're expanding it for people like you as well. Thank you. 
Yeah. No, um, I appreciate that and respect where you're coming from. Um, I think that it's different when you're actually from the community. You're actually from here. You know what I mean? I don't discredit you guys at all, man. I, I, I applaud what you're doing. I love your story. Um, and I agree with the hustler part. You're doing what you're supposed to do. And we're also doing what we're supposed to do in regards to speaking up for the people that don't have voices to, to speak up. Um, a lot of people don't understand the system. So they don't know that it's a freeze on, now it's off and now you can apply. They don't, they don't understand that. All they know is, man, it says a freeze on, now it's off, now I can apply. Okay. That hustler, that hustler mentality is going to have you, I'm going to step out anyway. You know, and I hear you saying that this is a strong piece of property. There's two adjacent lots, and, it, and it's commercial. And I, I think that's the very important significance in it, that it's commercial. And it can be more businesses, um, maybe, you know, uh, uh, diversity in there. You know, that no one's monopolizing, you know, the, the, the section. We, we look at our gas station store, not anything towards um, Arabs or Indian. Um, descent, but they're buying up everything in our neighborhoods. It's going all, all over. And we're not able to own anything or be in business and things in our own community. That's what we're trying to do again. But if all the commercial properties are bought up, we can't do it. Things are being rezoned to keep us out of buying certain things. Things are being redlined. It's a lot of stuff going on that we suffer from in our community that other people outside do don't not. see. They're only seeing it from that respect. I also just want to say that the freeze is not off. We were trying to move <laughs> certain groups of properties to, to start to start getting to a place where you know we could offer properties up. That's what we were trying to do. So just to clarify. And so yeah, I was going to say just to add another comment. Um, the other green piece of property when we bought it wasn't for sale too. It was, was no, that was for private sale. Um, <coughs> that I owned it. I owned it since 1980. Didn't plan on selling it, and we walked him through the plan that we were trying to do, and he ended up actually selling it to us. So what we're saying that we're fighting the same mission, I, I really do truly believe that Texas and Co is with it, and those two lots are being purchased so that the family dollar store owner doesn't buy it because he owns a gas station, a big building that's sitting there empty. Those are the same people. It's the same by people. An entity from Detroit. I've done my research, and I have concluded to why we're coming here. It wasn't just random. I just wanted to say that for the record. Sounds good. So uh, based on some of the comments that have been made tonight, um, I saw some heads nodding when we got to Johnson made the suggestion to kind of pause and um, go back to a more even playing field because now that things are going to be opening up again for people to give that statement of interest. Uh, so I just wanted to try and get a sense of where the committee is. Um, I, I also do agree, Dr. Johnson mentioned, these folks have taken the time out of their day to come and be with us today. And I think we owe them at least to hear um, their um, information uh, and do everything we just did with Hex Design with them as well to get our questions, et cetera, out. Um, and then, as, as we take that pause, we have that information and we can and consider it all. Uh, so that's kind of what I was hearing. I just want to see if you check in with all of you. I would like to hear other presentations as well. Yes, okay. Is everybody okay with hearing the rest of the week? Yeah. And thank you, oh, oh, Mr. Thank Mr. You. Mr. Thank you. <laughs> So our next case study is um, with Sunlight Garden, and Sunlight owns all of the property in green. And when that property transferred from Sprout to Sunlight, Sprout thought that they bought that little property in orange, but they didn't. So now Sunlight is saying, I really want that property because it has a sign on it already. I can use it for X, but really it, it, it really completes the whole garden. 
and it completes the whole garden for um, for sunlight to do other um, endeavors that they have. So. Um, one of the things, and these are the accomplishments of Sunlight. They've built a hoop house, or they're in the process of building a hoop house in this year. They've sold produce to local restaurants and to the, at the farmer's market and have been growing food specifically for downtown, um, downtown restaurants. And they're in the process of teaching youth in the neighborhood farming, urban farming, so specifically urban farming. Um, their short-term goals is to acquire the lot and expand the garden, use for signage, space announcement. The, um, the land bank would help them with the title work. Um, it would create a small venue for outdoor, they would like to create a small venue for outdoor weddings and gatherings. And um, they would be the site where we would start the community tour. Um, to talk about urban farming and in other land bank properties which are on the opposite side in the light orange which is that's on the other side of Oneida so the land bank owns all of the property that faces Oneida and a little bit on Parkway so there's just there's like one property on Parkway so this one right here so is it so is it two so hold on one second, Damon. The, the 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 question is is that it this for this case study it's only the lot in orange on this side. The only the one on Parkway and Kendall. Okay. On the corner, correct. So this is a little bit more about sunlight. Fun stuff. And again, this is what the the roles of the land bank and the roles of the advisory committee and how that action takes place. But we'd love to hear from Devon. Yeah. Yeah, I, I appreciate the opportunity to talk to all you guys because uh, I feel like this is a great uh, forum. You know what I'm saying? I feel like we should. Uh, it would be great to come together like this more and just talk amongst ourselves, right? Even. Um, but yeah, you know, um, so my mission is and has been with Sunlight Gardens is to increase access to local food. Um, we do that a number of ways, um, but I think the most important is obviously just growing produce, making it available to the community, local produce uh, that's full of vitamins, full of nutrients, uh, and also training new farmers and educating people and teaching them how to grow their own food and eventually run their own farming business if they want to. Uh, I heard we were talking about the lack of black businesses, which is very true and a, and a huge problem. There's even a bigger lack of black farmers. So there's only, out of all, I think there's two million plus registered farms in America. Only 1.4% of those are black owned. That is like, can, that's, a, that's actually an emergency in my eyes. Uh, so, you know, this is the direct goal of Sunlight Gardens is to create more black farmers. Um, we've been doing this work for six years. We, brought, we bought the property two years ago in 20, uh, uh, summer of 2020. So we haven't even really had it for like a full two, it's going on like two years right now. Um, and I, I like to think we made a lot of great progress already. Um, and like um, she was saying, when we initially bought the property, we kind of were told that we already had that property. Like we already thought that this was in the deal. So it's kind of like, oh, well, we should, you know, go ahead and figure out how to get the rest of that. Um, and yeah, just being completely transparent, we do have a, a lot of interest in that light orange um, section of property just to increase further our food security, right? Because um, this is such a big problem. Like you, you can't get local food necessarily anywhere, especially grown by black people that you can, um, you know what I'm saying? Eat and know that it's gonna be clean, nutritious, full of vitamins. I'm in the middle of um, trying to raise more awareness around the fact of like how, you know, what you eat can affect like your grades in school, how you, how you operate on a daily basis, you know, how like, 
I don't understand how kids are waking up eating a pop tart and cereal and then you know going to school eating like the same plain chicken sandwich with no lettuce or onion and trying to get high test scores. It's like they're you know it's like uh, we're eating a lot of stuff that's making us full, but it's not necessarily nurtured. Nurture, yeah, exactly, thank you exactly. So um, to go back to that that. The goal with that property would to be to continue to increase our food security. Um, that property is, you know, it's